Good morning, feathers. <clears throat> Here's your starter. Right, this is definitely worth a pause of the video. Um, obviously, it's an additional pure recurrence relation question. I think you've done it before. It's from one of the check-in tests. First good, so good question. So basically, it's where you take your recurrence relation and you give me a general solution. So you solve it. Uh, it's a great question. So you will need to stop the video and have a good go at it. Right, here's the solution. So it is the solution that I've taken from the work solutions, um, but it is a question you've done before. I think we've done this in class. So here's your solution down here. So a half n squared plus a half n. Right, so today, so it's the second lesson of proof by induction and using summation. So we're gonna follow on from yesterday and we've got, we, we, yeah, we're starting quite gently. It's only it's not gonna have two lessons, obviously. Um, we would normally probably, just a gentle start and then we'll sort of see how we're gonna work it after the, the first week, see how it's worked. So, what we're going to look at here, first of all, is a summation where it's not being written using sigma. Um, so, just I think there's just a few things that you have to know. I don't think it's actually any harder, but it's just a different style. So, here, prove by induction that, and again, it's the sum of the n terms of this sequence. And what's good about the question is, although you don't have to work out what the general term is, which which you know some of you might be able to do, um, because you can sort of see you've got this sequence here: two, five, eight, linear sequence, five, a, eleven, and so on. So that would make it a really hard question if you had to work out what the general term is. But they've given it you here as the nth term. So if you see if you're going to write this using sigma, you would just replace this for your general term that you're finding the sum of as 3r minus 1 times 3r plus 2. So proof by induction, it's going to follow the same set of rules. So you look for your base case. So when n equals 1, so your first term, so your first term, and you could either say, well, that's my first term, 2 times 5, which is 10, or your first term, that's your general term. So if you put n equals 1 in there, you will get 2 times 5, which is 10. Your right-hand side, when n equals 1, you can see I've substituted that in. So you've got 1, bracket 3, plus 6, plus 1. And again, that's 10. So that holds. Right, so what I've now done, because I think this makes my life easier, you might totally disagree with me, um, but I think it makes my life easier, simply because I've got that skill I had yesterday, and so I'm just going to sort of turn it into that. I, for me, it makes it easier, or it definitely means I don't have to write out loads of words. So I'm now going to assume that the sum of the first k terms of this sequence is this. So if you can go back to the question, you can see what I've done. Okay, I've taken my general term, put r's in there, going from 1 to k, and I've replaced my n with k in there. So I'm going to assume that that's true, and I now need for my inductive step to show that this result, when I take, when I go from 1 to k plus 1, I need to show that that result holds. And because I think this is quite a complicated one to show, I am going to work out what it is that I'm going to need to show. So you can see all I've done here is I've replaced the K with the K plus 1. And I've then simplified it, which is, you know, a little bit of work. But, you know, essentially, it's you just being careful and expanding some brackets. So, yeah, a little bit of work but nothing too challenging. Just do, just check what I've done there. And I've expanded that bracket and then simplified it. You know, just have a little look. 
Right, so to show the sum of the first k plus 1 terms is this. I'm going to have to get the sum of the first k terms and add on the k plus 1th term, just like you were doing yesterday. So again, I've written it there. That's what I'm going to have to show. And I literally replace that with what I assumed up there. And I'm now going to work out my k plus 1th term. And of course, my k plus 1th term is found by replacing this n with k plus 1. That being your general term. And then it is expanding your algebra. So I've ex I'm just sorting, I've obviously I've left that, sorted this out because it's a little bit horrible. Expanded that bracket, expanded those brackets, gathered them together. Okay, now this is when I'm really glad that I did work out that thing to show that first because although you've got your calculators will solve this so you'll be able to factorize it more easily so you can see that by factorizing that or at least making it look like I have done I have shown that that holds for the first k plus one term so the sum of the first k plus one terms they are the same so you've shown it yay Right, so conclusion, results true, and if it's true for n equals k, it's then true. We've, we've shown that if it's true for n equals k, then it's true for n equals k plus 1, therefore it's true for all n, that domino effect that we talked about. Right, so two questions. You can see you've got a nice straightforward one. So that should say prove by induction. Obviously, I've just written that one in. Um, prove by induction that the sum of the first n positive integers is n over 2, n plus 1. That's a result that you will have met various times. So that's quite nice and straightforward. However, you can see the next question is question 6. So we're talking a little bit harder. So good luck with that. This question is taken from exercise 1b and you will have in your textbook the work solutions obviously there's no answers to these because they are just proofs but the work solutions for number six will be on okay example two so i thought i'd cut that up hang on so a slightly different summation a different summation that uses indices a little bit now, instantly, when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking 6 is 3 times 2, um, or 2 times 3, which you've used quite a lot. So, obviously, it's a way of incorporating your 6 in with your power of 3, the fact that you can write it as 2 times 3 to the 1. Okay, your basis case, or your base case. So, the left-hand side, for the first term, obviously, the first term... If you're just going to get 4 times 3 to the 1, which is 12. And when n is 1, you're going to get 6 times 3. Take away 1, which is 12. It holds. Get in. Right. You're now going to assume the sum of the first. You're going to assume that this result works for the first k terms. So the sum of the first k terms is 6 bracket 3 to the k minus 1. You'll now want to show that that result that you're trying to prove works for the k first k plus 1 terms. So all I've done is I want to show that that is true. Okay, 6 to the 3k plus 1 minus 1. And again, you know that the sum of the first k plus 1 terms is the sum of the first k terms plus the k plus 1th term. You can see I'm having a right nightmare with these notations and putting sigma in. And Anyway. Right. So you replace this with this. So 6 times 3 to the k minus 1 plus the k plus 1th term. And of course your k plus 1th term 
will be, using your general term, 4 times 3 to the k plus 1. Right, a little bit horrible, but instantly when I have gone to multiply out my 6 because of my experience from all that proof by induction you've done in year 12, I know that 6 is 2 times 3. So I write my 6 as 2 times 3 and then I multiply it by 3 to the k. So can you see what's going to happen there? 6 times minus 1 is minus 6. Obviously I've kept it as 6 for there and then I've just got this little plus 4 times 3 to the k plus 1. Now instantly you can see you're going to get your 3 to the 1 times 3 to the k. So that's going to give you 3 to the k plus 1 there. So two lots of it. And then you can just simplify it. You've got six lots, so two lots of three to the k plus one, plus four lots of the three to the k plus one, obviously six lots of three to the k plus one. Now take out that factor of six and you have done it. You have shown the result that you were asked to show. Just go back and check, that's what you were asked to show and you've done that. So the result's true. So if it's true for n equals k, it's true for n equals k plus 1, therefore true for all n is greater than or equal to 1. You've proved that by induction. Okay, so question 1, so that's again question 1 from that exercise, and question 5. So as you can see, question 5 is looking quite a lot harder. You will have your work solutions, this is exercise 1b, in your online textbook.